I was asked how to control a servo with a potentiometer. A servo can be controlled by a potentiometer where when you turn the potentiometer, the servo horn turns. The process is pretty simple. All you're doing is connecting the potentiometer to the ADC, the analog digital converter, and you're connecting the, the servo to the output of the PWM pin the OCR pin. The NubiHack site has all of the resources to accomplish this project. Let's first see how to connect a potentiometer on the breadboard and to the ADC. The first option looks like a pretty good one. It's a voltage divider to the ADC using a potentiometer and it uh, is regarding breadboarding. So let's take a look at that. All right, I'm gonna find a spare. Okay, so the video is telling us to place the potentiometer on the breadboard. And then each lead on the outside leads go to ground and VCC. And then the middle pin goes to the ADC, the first pin of the ADC. Now we want to know how to connect the, the potentiometer or actually how to connect the AVCC and the, the ground for the ADC and the VREF. So I'm going to put in breadboard AVCC, AGND and VREF. And this one, it looks like it's the one we need because we want to set the reference voltage to use the AVCC voltage. Just from the video image, we can see that there's a capacitor between the, the ground and VCC or AVCC. And then there's the reference voltage is, has a capacitor from the uh, VREF to the, to the ground as well. So it's telling me to put a capacitor between the ground and power. It also tells us to put a capacitor between the ground and the VREF when it's using the AVCC um, as a as the reference voltage. And then we'll take ground to ground and then we'll take the power to the power rail. Now on the circuit the analog to digital converter is all set up. The potentiometer is connected to the the ADC pin one and we have the power pins all connected correctly. Now let's see how to connect a hobby servo. So it looks like the first one is the one we need. The circuit is very simple. OCR1A pin is on pin number 19. So the video is telling us to connect the yellow pin to pin number 19, so we'll do that. And black obviously goes to ground, and the red goes to the power, power rail. So now we are completely connected to have our servo be controlled by a potentiometer. Now let's get to programming it. We can also get the code from NubiHack, and we can do this a couple of ways. We can either look up um, what we want to in the search bar, ADC, let's see, interrupt, AVCC. So we'll have a whole bunch of information here on the first page. And anything that has programming in the beginning, you'll know that has the program. Or you can go to micro microcontroller tutorial, and you can go to the ADC in 10 bits. I'm going to be using this particular one because uh, I'm looking for 10 bits. We can also search for 10 bits in the in the video clip search. And we should have a program in here that we can, that we can use. We're not going to use the um, the LCD library, uh, but we'll use everything else. We'll use um, only the ref S0 in this particular instance because we only want to use the AVCC chip. This is for using the internal reference of 2.56 volts. So let's do a copy and paste. And let's go ahead and make a new project. Call it Pot Controlling a Servo. And we're looking for the... I'm using a 644, an AT Mega 644 in this case. 644A to be exact. We'll press OK. We're not going to need the skeleton code. We're just going to paste right over it. And we're going to remove anything that has the LCD. I'm going to make a small change in this one where I want the 10-bit results to be available in any part of the program. And I explained this before, but I can explain it in brief here. We need to make this a static volatile. So, it, so the compiler is not going to optimize the variable out. So I'm just going to put it over here. And we're going to remove the declaration here. And we're just going to make it the 10-bit result equals to this. And we can draw. We can call the ten bit result at any point in the program. We're going to need that because I want to. I want to be able to uh, control the servo within the while loop rather than within the the interrupt vector. Now we need to know how to what code we need for the servo. Let's go back to the NubiHack site. I'll try programming. Hobby servo PWM OCR. 
This one looks like it's a pretty good one. So we'll just click the one that says programming. Let's see if we have any program. I don't have a program on this one. I may have, I'll have to add this, add the program to the end of this particular video clip. Let's see what the video clip says. We can already see what code we need. So I'm just going to copy that into the, the program line by line. This is needed because port D is going to um, have the OCR pin and it needs to be set to output. Now I'm just doing all of the pins to output. You can go back to the video on this stuff. I'm just explaining what waveform uh, generation mode we're using and also using the 16-bit version of the PWM and this is the top end of the PWM uh, timing. Now the OCR portion, I want that to be in within the while loop. To make the horn move from one position to the other position, from one extreme to the other extreme, um, this has to be either 800 for one extreme and then about 2300 for the other extreme. So what we need to do is we need to um, convert a value that would be from 0 to 1023 to a value that would be 800 to 2300. And we can use the slope intercept formula to do this. And let's go ahead, instead of doing it on paper, we can do it right into the program. This way we'll be able to um, actually insert the, the high and low values for the, the horn movement, and we can adjust those uh, within the program and, uh, and get to the, to the actual numbers that will provide a full rotation on the servo. So let's start, we're gonna do this outside of the while loop because most of these are gonna be constants anyway. We'll call our first number y1 and that will be equal to 800. And then y2 will be equal to 2300. Now we need to determine our slope. Our slope would be, we can call float m. The, uh, the reason why I'm using float m is because the formula is y is equal to mx plus b. And this is the, the function of, of x. This is the slope, this is x, and this is the offset or the intercept. So let's go to m, this is the, we're gonna to have to do the, the delta y over delta x, or the difference of, in the y's over the difference in x. The difference in y is, I'm gonna start with the y2 because that one is, it'll give us a positive number on the top. And we're gonna sub subtract that from y1, and then we're gonna divide this by the difference in x's. But the difference with the x, if I went from x2 to uh, minus x1, then it would be 1023, minus zero, and that just equals 1023, so I really don't need to make that any more complicated. So we know m, which is the slope. We know x, which is the 10-bit value. We need to determine what, uh, what b is. Let's write the formula again, m times x plus b. So we can plug in a couple of numbers for y. Let's see, y will be 800. Let's pick 800, because that would be, that would match the zero for the x side. So we put zero here. So right off the bat, we know that m times zero is zero. So we don't even need to figure out what this slope is just to find b. We can just say b is equal to 800. So let's go ahead and just not worry about that in the formula because we can just write that in here. So all we're gonna do is to get the, between the 800 and 2300 from the, the, the 10 bit number is we're gonna use the formula m times the 10 bit number, the 10 bit result, and we're just going to add 800 to the end because that's b. I'm going to contain all of that just to make sure. So this should work. Let's see if it builds. No errors. Quite amazing. So let's try uploading it to the controller and see if we have a successful result. I tried to upload it and it didn't work because I don't. I had this in debug and I needed it to be in release. I'm going to build it again and then upload. Okay, the microcontroller has been programmed and I'm going to try it. Yep, it turns when I turn the potentiometer. I need to work on the, the extremes a little bit, but the program works. To adjust the extremes where the uh, horn isn't turning enough or it's turning too much and uh, hitting the end, just um, using a little bit of trial and error, just adjust these numbers and uh, program it and see how, how it works. That's how to control a servo with a potentiometer. Thank you for watching. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.